Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 27th. First up, this was sent by my friend Bob1954 Shadow. This is some new developments on the tests they were doing on the F50, F1 rocket engine. If you remember on a previous article I did on the TDD report, the F1 rocket engine is the most powerful engine ever built as a single engine and built by NASA for the rocket launches for the Apollo. Well, they're taking them out of storage, parts of the, the rocket engine themselves out of storage, and what they did was they actually tested the rocket motor to the turbine pumps. Now, this looks like a rocket in and of itself, and it produces enough thrust to, to power something up into the air, but basically it produces its 31,000 pounds of thrust and its 55,000 horsepower just to run a set of turbine pumps to produce fuel for the engine, the main engine itself that actually lifts the rocket and the payload off. So this is just the uh, engine that drives the fuel pump, so to say. And uh, it's cool, the engineers are standing around in 1961, I'll put the photograph up here, they're standing around in 1961, a tire in front of one of the original F1 engines. But this test runs about 30 seconds, and I'll give you the link to uh, both this article, this article is from Ars Technica, and then I'll give you the nasa.gov link which uh, gives you the video they actually show you the test video of the firing you get two different views of it so pretty fantastic what they're going to do is they're going to use some of the test results from this and they're not going to actually make so much a redesigned version of an f1 but they're going to use it for um, just getting some information on whatever kind of new design they do come up with they want to come up with something that's simple along the lines of the f1 rocket because it's a very simple easy design and it's basically a throwaway design too whereas the more complex engines, such as aboard the shuttle main engines, they're multi-stage engines, and you don't want to throw them away because they're very expensive to develop, but they're also, because they're multi-stage and they reburn the combustion results, they're very efficient. So you want to actually have some of the attributes of a design like that, but in something that's inexpensive enough you can throw away. So hopefully with the information they get from these tests, they can do something like that. This next one was sent in by my friend Jeff, really too ugly. This is just an email sent in. I, d I don't do these too often, but once in a while one of them is just so hilarious and so funny. And if you've ever done any kind of plumbing or electrical work or anything like that, especially when you come in after somebody has tried to repair it and weren't too successful at doing it, I'm just going to show you. I, I believe these. this was in an email, but I think these mostly are taken off of thereifixedit.com. So some of you have probably seen a few of these, but this first one's called the Sideways P-Trap. You know, I guess if uh, if your wife is complaining about she can't fit so much stuff under the sink because the P-trap's in the way, you can just kind of tip it up sideways maybe. And then uh, the second one here, if one trap is good, why, why not put in two? And this next one is sideways P-trapped version two. And then next up is upside down P-trap. Now I would actually call it, they call it an upside down P-trap. I think it's just a different version of the sideways one. And believe it or not, by the looks of it, I think this one is actually functional. I think it would actually work. Uh, maybe not the best way to do it, but it actually is workable. And then, of course, if you've done any kind of plumbing work that somebody else has been to before, you've always, or, or some, most of you probably have encountered, the tape fix. Yeah, why, why buy a little 50-cent part at a hardware store to, to fix the seal when you can put about $3 worth of electric tape on it and get it fixed that way? And then we have your long flexible elbow to fix your plumbing problem and now this last one this is to me this is scary dangerous don't even attempt something like this uh, this is breakers keep tripping let's take them out and wire them wire nuts together wire them together with wire nuts yeah this is uh basically you're wanting your house to burn down but anyway i thought you guys would get a kick out of that and this next one is also from Bob1954 Shadow, and, and he's into steampunk like I am. And this, this guy himself, his name is, let me see if I can get this. I'll probably slaughter the pronunciation, but it's Ai Wei Wang. And the guy is an animator for, for games and also a character development guy. So he's got some pretty good artwork on his website, which is called crabfoo.com. But this uh, one that Bob sent in, it's the Steampunk Centipede. And it's really, really cool. He's developed a lot more robots besides this. If you scroll down to the bottom of crabfoo.com and then click down there to go to the main page of crabfoo.com, you will see all kinds of different steampunk and steam type of robots that he's developed. He also, I guess, on uh, some type of robot event, he uh, got two gold medals for his robots when he brought them to the event there. So 
Uh, I think that's kind of cool. One of the links is also to Wired.com. It's funny, on his main website, he doesn't even have his name anywhere. Um, so I had to actually go to iWired.com to find out what his name was. And this last one, now, um, this is something I was curious if anybody I knew really well would ever come upon a scene and collect enough evidence to where the police would actually um, ask for it. And my buddy Muzzle Mike, he's one of those that leaves his camera running all the time. I don't do it so much, but it would probably be a good idea if I did it more. I know um, quite a few people in the motor vlogging community do just constantly leave their camera running during their rides. Well, he came upon an intersection and an accident took place, and he got a good, good enough film of the whole thing that the cop wanted a copy of it. So... I'm going to play his video here. I had him just uh, explain in his own words what, what actually happened. He doesn't have the video itself for some reason. When the cop made a copy off of his desk, it messed up his file or the cop erased it or something, which probably isn't great, so great for a chain of evidence, but whatever. So anyway, um, I'm going to end it right there uh, with uh, Muzzle Mike's video. It's going to um, end the show. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week. <coughs> Yesterday, whenever I was out and about making a video, I always... I always leave my camera run whenever I have it in my in my helmet. I never know what I'm going to say. I never know what I'm going to see. But whenever I was out and running around, um, I was actually witnessed a car accident that was in front of me in an intersection. I seen it happen. It was a, a convertible sports car creamed into a, another car, a silver. I think it was a Pontiac. Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I pulled over, waited for the cops to come, which they came pretty quick. And I figured, you know, I'd, I would uh, offer to be a uh, you know, witness to it. Um, the cop, the police officer that uh, seen me, seen that I had a camera on my helmet, and said, oh, is that cam was that camera on at the time? Which it was. He asked me, could he, um, get the video off of me. I didn't see any problem with it. I said, well, maybe it'll help it, because the silver car, there was an older lady <clears throat> that was driving at the time, and the, uh, convertible was actually a young kid. The young kid in the convertible ran the light, and right into the, the silver car. So I, I said, well, no, why not? Pop the car out, and here the police officer happened to have a laptop in his car, which I didn't know that around here most of the police officers do have laptops in their cars. He, took, he was just going to copy the, uh, the file over. Well, evidently he made a mistake because it was, it, it's no longer on the disc, and I do run with my smaller four gigabyte discs in my uh, in my camera whenever I'm local. The only time I really I run with my larger discs whenever I'm um, further away. But I mean, it, it, just a little note that you know, <clears throat> us running around with our cameras. I mean, they they, they can do more just for enjoy than just for enjoyment. They actually can help somebody out whenever there's an incident like this. I mean, <clears throat> when it comes down to it, it just kind of, he, he says, she says, whenever it's, um, when it comes to something like that, and it makes it harder on the person that is actually innocent. And from understand, this video that I had was made, it, was, it would really, really weigh on her side, if not just completely prove it. Um, I mean, it, it, it just showed it perfectly. I mean, it happened like right in front of me practically. I was actually in line right at the intersection where I seen it. And the police officer actually ran and could not get over how good quality it actually was in. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really just shows you I mean, we can help somebody out whenever it's needed just by offering a video and it's not really hurting us.